Hi, this is, a this is a special edition of News Now, Belmont Journal's daily news show and community update. And I am Parul Laneja, your host. The Belmont Gallery of Art has a new virtual exhibit, Art Heals. Among the artists who are represented, John Williams' work drew the attention by the feelings and the atmosphere he's able to create. We are lucky to have John and his mother on the show today. John, Kathleen Piggott, thank you for coming on the show. You're welcome. So my first question is to you, John. Mm -hmm. What does art mean to you? Well, for me personally, art gives me a way into my own sort of world where I can sort of feel at ease, feel calm, if you will. And my work almost seems to, for me personally, seems to flow almost, almost like naturally, if you will. And it, it certainly gives me uh, satisfaction when doing it. And I enjoy, at the same time, I really do enjoy sharing it with others. John, how would you describe the feedback that it gives you? How does it make you feel? Um, hmm. Well, I would say, you know, certainly a sense of calm if I want to, the more absorbed I am in my art process. That is, even though I always start out with a plan of sort of a conception for each piece, they at times seem to take on a life of their own, if you will, even during the creation process. You know, it's almost like breathing a new life into a su the subject. And to be honest, I don't know how it happens at, at times. It just is something that comes naturally to me. Kathleen, how was the journey from learning about John's autism to getting the right support for him? Well, John is 39 years old now. And he, um, was uh, he arrived well before the autism boom <laughs> occurred. And so at the time he was um, a little boy, not, nothing was known about Asperger's syndrome or other high functioning autism. Uh, so he was always in a special needs class, but his peers were all um, Down syndrome children. And uh, he didn't receive a diagnosis on the autism spectrum, which was at the time known as Asperger's syndrome until 1992 when he was 11 years old. Um, so it was a different journey for us than for a parent today who has access to lots of services, especially for young, young children. Um, but luckily for us, John had very enlightened teachers along the way. He was always in special ed classes but they worked very hard to um, really invent and experiment with ways of dealing with John and helping him in the classroom. Uh, and it was pretty successful. So eventually he learned to read and do math. He was a little later, uh, but once that happened, then things really fell into place pretty well. John stayed in uh, the Concord area special ed um, collaborative, as it's known, for all of his um, elementary and high school education, well, up to high school, through, so through junior high. And um, when he went to high school, he was the first student from that collaborative who was going to a regular high school, uh, albeit with a full-time aide. And so John had wonderful services um, all through that program and into high school where uh, so an aide attended uh, school with him, his classes, and then he also had a resource room where he could um, escape <laughs> when he needed to have a break from the stress, um, and also a place where he could take his test. The school was very accommodating in terms of uh, providing modifications for John, so he had any number of those things like passing classes before the other kids. So he wasn't so affected by all the hustle muscle um, and everything associated with teenagers. And um, he, had, he could have unlimited time for his tests, et cetera, and he could take them by himself in the resource room. So those were wonderful modifications that made a big difference in his performance and enabled him by the end of high school to 
really um, do well on his own. He used his aid less and less as he got to the end of high school. And then, of course, he went on to college, first at Middlesex Community and later at UMass Lowell. But again, uh, Middlesex actually has some very good services. And um, he had similar modifications uh, for those first couple of years. And then after that, he, he really didn't need them anymore. Um, so it was a journey of self, dis- you know, discovery for us. <laughs> Everybody's like, what's Asperger's syndrome? He was the first kid in his school to have that diagnosis. So mm. imagine today how different it is. Mm. Um, but um, everybody worked hard to try to make opportunities for John and he was in programs like the gifted art program when he was in junior high. Uh, he was on the swim team at Winchester High School. So uh, it was it was a great um, a great learning uh, for us going through this process, uh, but one that turned out very well, as you can tell. So we didn't even know what services to ask for, to be honest. Um, now parents have a lot more resources uh, out there, but also a lot more competition for the resources. So I know that's a big challenge uh, for parents today. Absolutely. Well, that sounds like some journey, uh, inventing the wheel as you go. So John, this is from mom's perspective. From your perspective, is there anything you wish you had when you were growing up? Like, how do you think that in today's day, when all this knowledge about autism exists, how can the community support artists like you? Well, essentially, they can. So the community can support people, well, such as myself, by recognizing our strengths, if you will, and providing the opportunities to share whatever you know, whatever work we seem to excel at. That is. And this would provide not only motivation for us to pursue whatever our talents may be and to see where they may lead, may lead us. So showing our work certainly gives us a way to interact with people, which is quite difficult for people like us, for example. That's amazing. That's, that's very good feedback. I think hearing it from a person who has this experience and is so accomplished is just so um, helpful. Mm-hmm. Um, Kathleen, when did you realize that John had this gift with his art skills? When he was three or four years old, the first time he ever held a piece of clay in his hand, it was immediately obvious. Uh, John uh, loved clay modeling, and it was the one activity that would really keep him calm and focused. And so we just stumbled upon that, just as any parent, you know, gives his or her child some Play-Doh. That's how we started, too. But John had extraordinary 3D talent. And as much as it was difficult for him to do fine motor tasks, like holding a pencil, for example, the clay, of course, is soft and forgiving. And he was able to produce the most amazing uh, dinosaurs and all kinds of fanciful creatures with clay, even at that very young age. And the thing that set it apart, I think, was not just that he created these wonderful imaginative creatures, but they were, it was like they were alive, like they were going to fly or jump off the page uh, or the desktop. And it was obviously a gift. In fact, he could produce these without even looking at the clay. It's as though the clay just, the, the, the subject um, just evolved out of his sense of this lump of inanimate <laughs> material that eventually became a, a, a very fantastic uh, sculpture of some kind. So. We knew immediately that that was his greatest strength. And he pursued that throughout his life up through um, college. That just sounds amazing. Um, I cannot even fathom what that experience might be to just see a three, four year old create these things which like are real and like talking to you. So given this is Autism Awareness Month, 
what would you like people to know about both the challenges and the gifts that autism brings to your art? Mm. Well, certainly for a person that is on the spectrum, the world can be a, at times a rather scary and even chaotic place, to say the least. And it is hard. It can be hard to stay calm and focused when there's all the, all the so much stimuli seemingly swirling around. That is, and at, we often, of course, we don't really even tend to learn social skills readily, and even find it difficult to communicate. So we tend to suffer from almost seemingly unending anxiety, and prefer to see living in our own little worlds where it feels more safe and more peaceful, that is. And although the challenges of daily living are overwhelming, autism nonetheless causes, has, causes at least me personally to see the world differently. And I bring this new perspective to, to my artwork, as you can see. And to me, this is my, my you know, personal gift to, to myself and others as well. I agree. I absolutely agree. It has been a true gift to see all your artwork. Yeah. Kathleen, when did you realize that um, this was more than just a hobby, that it was his calling or this would be his profession for the rest of his life? I would say um, really when John was in college. I think all along I figured that he would be an artist. Um, and um, he, when he per continued to pursue, pursue sculpting in college, it was very obvious that he had a lot of talent for it. And, um, but it, when he got to the end of his college career, he decided that he would prefer to uh, try this uh, cut paper collage yeah. technique that he had uh, used in high school. Um, and by then, John had become extremely interested in history. That was kind of his second special skill. And he had deep knowledge because he, as many, as you know, from autistics like to go deep. Mm -hmm. So um, he learned a great deal, starting with civil war and expanding into many, many aspects of world history, US history, and um, <clears throat> decided that he could marry up this um, deep interest in history with this collage technique to create historical portraits. So that's what he started doing after college, even at the end of his college career. And they've been extremely well received. Um, so, uh, you know, I thought, well, maybe he could be a history teacher, but in mm -hmm. fact, he really is because each one of his historical portraits is kind of a mini history lesson. And if you um, get to hear John talk about one of them, you'll see they have multiple levels of meaning uh, because he includes a lot of historical background information uh, in the portrait itself. And so um, it's kind of the best of both worlds, I guess. Um, and that has, um, that's been something very special. John has really created his own genre that no one else is doing what he does that we have observed. And so it's, a, it's very something very special, very challenging to duplicate. <laughs> and um, it's just uh, a unique way of seeing the world. And <clears throat> even though he's using little pieces of flat paper to produce these um, wonderful portraits and landscapes, they have a 3D sculptural quality to them that comes from his... Um, his 3D talent. And so, um, so part of all of those things get uh, rolled together to create um, these marvelous artworks. So John, that is very interesting. Could you describe one of your art pieces for us? Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Um, one excellent example of one of, is a portrait I did of Nicholas II of Russia, known as, the, known as perhaps Russia's last czar, if you will. And I learned early on from, based on my research that he's, a, that he's a man who never actually wanted to be czar and was about as ill-suited to the role as he could possibly be. And his, the, his eyes, which I carefully you know, illustrated, are clearly a 
you know, averted that way. And they would, they, and these are the eyes of that of a, if you will, a, more of a dreamer and not that of a self-confident leader that is. And the way the, the, that his eyes are averted is, show, is a clear indication of his rather discomfort in his new public role that is. And he also really hides behind this oversized uniform, which is part of his facade, you know, if you will. And believe me, I myself understand how it feels because I have to put on a front more often than not. That is pretending to be more social and self-confident than I actually feel. That is, and in my in my role as the historian, I often try to add um, enough context to each of these portraits with these small images or vignettes, as they're referring to, illustrating the history surrounding that that uh, that particular person. In this case, in the, the case of Nicholas, the, it's the tumultuous time of the Russian Revolution. That is, the rich, dark background that I chose him and, 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 and the halo surrounding his head, which you will clearly see, reflect the influence of Russian iconography, to be more specific. And as you can see, there are often multiple levels of meaning in each of my portrait I do. That is, artists frequently comment on the sculptural nature of, the, of my artwork. So John, where can we learn more about your art? Well, you can find most of my work on my own uh, website titled, uh, all lowercase letters, uh, johnmwilliamsfineart.com. And you can also find out more about me on Facebook and Instagram at uh, this time upper is John M. Williams Fine Art. And by the way, I also have work on an Etsy store. So John, where mm -hmm. can we actually experience your art in real life? Oh, well, and every summer, at least around, at, around Labor Day, we can, I have a solo uh, show of sorts. It's, it's more, if we're in Provincetown, Mass, it's, 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 it's kind of like a, a, a gallery, but a work show at the same time, because I demonstrate, and the day, during the day, I, and into the early evening hours, sometimes I demonstrate my process by wor working on something in the, you know, the gallery, you know, whether it could be, every space, it could be, Usually the, the drawing phase, and then the part that the, the the phase would involves cutting and gluing, you know the you know the pieces of magazine paper onto whatever it is that I'm working on. So it gives an opportunity for people to what, to observe what it is I do, as well as to admire all my uh, other work. You know, because like that's you know all on the nearly hung on every wall that is and and it's an well and as well as an opportunity to purchase thank you so much john and kathleen for your time mm -hmm. you can learn more about john's art at john m williams fineart.com you were watching the special edition of news now on belmont journal's daily news show i'm your host paro thank you for watching